All right, man, say what's up, man? It's your boy, Charleston White. Uh, Y'all already know what it is. This is another episode of the Game Related Podcast. Game Applied means elevation. What's up with it, dude? Hey, man, y'all know what time it is, man. A bunch of games finna be laid down the ground today, man. So, hey, man, let's get this thing started, man. Already, man, we got a special guest today. Uh, my pastor, uh, uh, my minister. Uh, we. In, in, in the community, we call him the Moses. I Moses, uh, but he, he he known throughout the city, man, as as, as pops uh, to the youth. Uh, I like to say his his, his congregation uh, in our city has has the largest. Uh, uh, he has the largest youth ministry. Uh, if you had to uh, categorize or, 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 or label uh, what he do in the city, uh, it was a it was an unorthodox church. Uh, called the Classy Lady. Uh, this 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 particular uh, church never closed. Uh, it stayed open 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days for over 15 years. Uh, this church done been sh shot at from the outside. Uh, they gamble inside this church. Uh, they party and drank liquor inside this church. They play pool, they shoot craps, they play poker, they shoot dice, uh, they cook food. Uh, this church became a homeless shelter. Uh, uh, I think this church probably did everything but sold pussy out of it. Uh, and, and, and here's the, the minister. Here's the man that, that overseen, overseen that church. Uh, outside of that church, there was a banner there was a banner that says, no handguns allowed in Pops Place My Nigga. On, between that sign, and there was two signs that says, no gang banging allowed. Crips was wrote in red, Bloods was wrote in blue, Crips and Bloods stop robbing and killing one another. Uh, that building had gun holes on it. I mean, uh, it had bullet holes in it. But those three signs uh, was never touched. Uh, so I wanted to get the old man on here. Uh, Pops, a.k.a. a Weasel. Uh, and kind of, kind of, I, I want him to tell us around the concept of the classy lady. Why, why he opened it, why it became what it became, and how, how it became that. So with that being said, uh, can you introduce yourself, Pops? He tricked me again. <laughs> <laughs> he have a tennis to, to trick me. And if everybody know, I had a sign up once, said, no game banging allowed, save your children's, my nigga. A officer, a federal, now he's just a local police officer. He went and told every television channel that a man have used nigger two times on a sign. And every TV channel was down in front of classy lady, feminine. And they told me, you wrong for using the word nigger. I am the last nigger left. Those are my ancestors. I live for that. What I am is what I am. But we're not going to talk about me. We're going to talk about Classy Lady. Classy Lady was in an area where every black hated one another. The mayor of Fort Worth, Texas, said it was zero tolerance zone. Do you know what zero tolerance means? They didn't even get, they didn't even get stop six or one. They said everything in stop six was zero. Ignorant, stupid, and illiterate. Every contact with the police, you go to jail. So I mean, every contact, every encounter with the police, you're arrested. That's what zero tolerance meant. The bottom of the pit. Every encounter. If a woman pulled over with her three kids in the back and she got traffic tickets, ain't no ma'am, take care of your tickets. It's, do you got somebody that can come get these kids, these kids go to CPS, you go to jail. That's what zero tolerance was. So me, being zero, 
the last nigga left, these are my peoples, and I refuse to let my peoples be ignorant. So each and every day, I tried to teach them love and respect for one another. I had never, ever seen so many sisters and brothers and friends hate one another and talk about one another each and every day. So I could not go to Classy Lady being who I was because I would have to fight every day. So I had to go to Classy Lady and try to explain to people how you're supposed to act, what you're supposed to do in everything. Because it was a group of young people that Classy Lady, they didn't have a mama. They had a mama, but she didn't have a mama or didn't have a grandpa or didn't have a daddy, didn't have nobody to teach them love. In the house, they woke up mad. When they come out doors, they was mad, and all there was was violence each and every day. Yeah. So me, Charleston White gave me the name as a minister. I am not no minister. I am not going to lie to y'all. I am a true gambler. That's what I do. And I open up me a casino in Fort Worth, Texas. Classy lady. Classy lady's name was some ladies that was want to be men's, and they called it Classy Lady. Well, when I opened it up, I had to pay a hundred dollars to get the name changed, so I just let the name stay the same, Classy Lady. So, stop right there. Now, this is what I say. He the minister. One night, Classy Lady get robbed. I'm looking down the barrel of a nigga with a shotgun with dirt on it, a 38 with dirt on it, and tape tied up around that motherfucker. These niggas had on leather coats from the 70s with do-rags on their heads. And they were some old niggas, and they was dangerous, and they wasn't playing. They robbed everybody in the parking lot and robbed everybody inside that motherfucker. And them niggas told me to say, this is Weasel Pop's church house. I'm looking down the gun and this nigga telling me the classy lady is a motherfucking church house. And you tell Pops, man, this is his church house. So I said, man, God damn it. So ever since then, he lying to me. He the minister. That was the church house, them nigga said. This weasel's church house. And when they finally closed the doors on the classy lady, I used to always wonder why the police never came in there and arrested nobody. The police always waited for a nigga to leave out that building, or if they had a warrant for a nigga, they always knocked. And they had pops, could, they sent him out, they had a gun drawn, but they never went in. He had the motherfucker registered as a church house. I didn't know that, we didn't know that. So that's why I called it a church house, and he the minister. So that's why we interviewing him about the classy lady. Classy lady is a place where the people that robbed Classy Lady that night, they didn't really rob Classy Lady. The people that came back, I told everybody, close up, everybody go home. Well, some of my homeless people didn't have no home and they didn't listen to me. <laughs> I could have easily waited on them brothers to come back and ambush them brothers and kill them. I raised them brothers. I know what they're going to do. So why would I want to harm them or kill them? My thing at Classy Lady was don't put my hands on nobody and try to tell everybody quit putting their hands on one another because Classy Lady, Stop Six was an area where it is known violence each and every day. Zero tolerance zone in the bottomless pit. Charleston White come down there, a little advocated white boy. He's a little, what you call them, the educated white boys that come and speak on everything down there. <laughs> he come down there and spoke on everything that was going on wrong down there. When they fixed the road down there, he went to bother them people <laughs> was fixing the road down there and everything. <laughs> and bringing all them rich white folks to Classy Lady. He brought in and the chief of police and everybody else and talking about me shaking their hand and all of that. And he know I'm a crook. What do I look like meeting the police? <laughs> <laughs> what do I look like meeting the police? I don't meet no police. I don't talk to no police, but I had to be polite. <laughs> I had to be polite when I talked to the mayor. I had to be polite. I don't talk to politicians because all politicians are liars. Donald Trump showed y'all that, and that's their game. 
Well, in Fort Worth, Texas, we don't have no way to make no money, and I wasn't going to sell no dope no more and rob no more and go back to the penitentiary like I had been all the last 30 years of my life in the federal penitentiary. So I opened up me a building, and I put a law in it, and that was the law. When Crips and Bloods come to Classy Lady, they love one another. They don't hate one another. They don't hate one another, and all sides of towns can come to Classy Lady, and it's not going to be no problems. If they do, we're going to try to stop it. So Classy Lady was my casino, and Corona closed her down. I'm mad. Can you cuss it <laughs> Yeah, you cuss it I'm mad and a motherfucker at Corona for closing my place down. Now I don't have now another building. Now, neither do I want another one club because I do not want to be bothered with all the tennis shoe wan, crips, bloods, rappers, <laughs> and all the ignorant, illiterate young males that come out every week to fight and squabble, including they women's with that weave in hair. I don't want no weave in hair on my parking lot. The next spot I open up, it's a gambling spot. If you don't gamble, don't come. I take that case. I take so, a gambling's case because gambling is legal. Everybody gamble. The judge gamble. They gamble in the, in the, in the jail house. Fuck you talking about. So gambling is legal. Selling pussy is illegal. Selling dope is illegal. Anything we do is illegal to get us some money. That's her pussy. She ought to be able to sell it. That's my dick. I ought to be able to sell it. But American law says against the law. So what are those people going to do down in the bottomless pit? So, so let me ask you this, Pop. You always say blacks in America should be able to have the right to sell whatever. Why do you believe that? White folks sold a nigga. White folks sold a nigga for selling dope. I mean, white folks used to sell nigga. White folks used to sell black folks. Which one is wrong? For a nigga to sell some dope or a white folks sell us? They made money selling us. Hmm. So any nigga that sell dope, he ain't supposed to be in jail. He had to sell something in America. Every nigga don't want to go to work. Now, Negroes, Afro-Americans, and just black, they going to work for whitey or well, the Italian or the Jew. Well, what's the difference between uh, N-I-G-G-E-R, a, a Negro, a just hmm. black, a Afro-American, and this hip-hop? What's the difference? It's a whole lot of difference. Can ain't no more niggas. Ain't no more niggas. I don't like the way y'all use the word nigga. Them was proud people. Them was people that got beat up that wanted to vote, just wanted to, just wanted to have something. Those was mm. niggas. The first people that come over here, what did Phil tell us? Phil told Kuta Kente, man, you can't get back to Africa. We got to watch these white folks. So the Negro watched the white boy, learned the white boy. Then Dr. King come along and said, we got to go join him. So the so nigga, we, the nigga didn't watch the white boy. The nigga, the nigga don't trust no white boy. He whooping him with a whip and things like that. You think a nigga trust a white boy? Hell no, not now, nah, never. He didn't fool with him. He didn't understand. You have translators mm. now. If an Iraq come over here, you got a translator for that Iraq. When them niggas got off of that boat, the black people got off that boat in 1500. You didn't have no translator over yeah, here. So yeah, when the white man should stand on the auction block, black man didn't even understand what he's saying. He's checking the chains, pulling him up there. Didn't have no translators. And the white boy started the word nigger, N-I-G-G-E-R, because he couldn't put a said nigger or something like that. Then all of a sudden, here the black man said, I don't want to be called a nigger. Call me a negro. Negro mean you went to the white boy school and you white. You ain't no, you ain't black, period. You got that white boy's education. You are English white boy. What did you tell me? I asked you, I said, which one of them white boys is you, Charleston? You said, I'm the English white boy. I said, You're I'm not the, the British cowboy, white yeah. boy. I'm the You're not the Russian white boy. You're the English white boy because you're born in the English country. Hmm. You speak English. You don't speak your tongue. You don't even, the black American don't even know which, who they are. We was niggas. He sold us, he gave us his name. When we went to another plantation, now we Jones. We go to another plantation, now we Smith. Hmm. Now today here we are wearing no slave name. We don't even know our name. We don't even know what our name is. Mexicans know what their culture are. Chinese know what their cultures are. Indians know what their culture are. What is your culture? You ain't living like Phil told you to live? Dr. King said, let's go join the white folks because Dr. King's dream was to fool with white folks. Why we can't get along? Why we can't all be one in America? One what? One white boy? Crazy little motherfucker. I don't want to be no white boy. I love my ancestors. 
I love them old niggas. Them old niggas taught me everything I know, and I can't even read and write. But I learned how to get up every day and get up and go get me some money. I worked when I was a little boy. So I'm a grown man, and I'm going to work for another man. You got me fucked up. So, 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 mm -hmm. the, so the Negro is the educated of black American with the white man's education and mindset. What's the Afro-American? The Afro-American is the one that wanted to open up a place of business and just have him a place of business. And when Dr. King said, let's go join the white folks, then the Afro-American lost their businesses. Because now blacks can go to all restaurants, they can go everywhere, so now blacks ain't got no business. Look at our neighborhoods now. Chum Fong Song Long done moved in our neighborhoods, opening up stores yeah. and things, man. We yeah. ass shit, man. Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, we used to have this side, because whites still on that side, blacks still on this side, Italians still on this side. Jews had a side of their own. Everybody had a side. Hmm. But when integration come in, then everybody integrated. But you never catch an Italian want to eat no white boy's steak. He don't want that shit. He didn't go to that white boy's restaurant. The white boy went to his restaurant. White boy go to everybody's restaurant. Everybody don't go to the white boy's restaurant except the black, the uppity black Negroes. They love white folks. So, so mm. what's the difference? What comes after Afro-American? The nigger? The nigga? What come out? You got the nigger first. You got the Negro. You got the Afro-American. And you just got black. Now, y'all have renamed. The white boy won't let y'all say nigga, so y'all say nigga. Ain't no such thing as no nigga, but you created the birth of a new nation. Nigga, because them white folks wouldn't let you use the word nigga. You had to give up them t-shirts you had with nigga on it, and you had to quit using the word nigga. All you had to do was just be with them white folks and leave the word nigga alone, and you'd have anything you want. But now you want to come down there and fool with I. Mm -hmm. So when you come down there and fool with thy, your mama say you got that man's spirit. You got baptized. So the the what's the what's the the just black is us. The just black is y'all. Yeah, the new generation. Y'all the new generation. Y'all don't wear y'all pants up like this. Y'all wear y'all pants where you can see your panties and see your little penis. <laughs> you know what I'm the old Negroes wear they pants up where you you know you see that. I can tell a police a mile off. I can tell a police by the way they dress. So y'all created a new thing. Now it's called nigga and hip hop, and they ain't listening to a motherfucking thing. They ain't got no daddy. They hate their daddies. They hate their uncles. Oh, they hate their grandpas. They love their mama. They love their aunties. They love the women. They don't like the black man because there wasn't no black man there to teach them a goddamn thing, so they don't know nothing. Boy been raising boy from 83 to now. Not taking nothing away from the man. He tried, the Negro tried, but y'all mm. just rebelled against him. And all you little boys that come up in a single house with your mama, y'all don't pay no old man no mind. Y'all hate old niggas. And you show sure hate your stepdad is trying to tell y'all what to do and do this and do that. So it's fucked up now. So we are a race of people. That's really why I don't believe in God. What did we do to God that here we is in 2023 with no knowledge of who we are? I watched the difference between when you was home from federal prison and how the classy lady was ran. Everybody come down there and feel safe. I watch you jump in front of guns. Uh, I watch you stop niggas from getting killed. Uh, why, why do all that? Why what? Why, why you do all that? For what? You, I'm a soldier. You, you, you I don't see my people's killed one you, you, you old. You was in just, you were early 70s then. I'm a soldier. It's in my blood. Oh, man. I'm your, a soldier. Your no son, explanation. when you ain't there, your boys and them say, say, nigga. That's right. Y'all go out to the street and <laughs> kill right. each other. That's right. Don't and you, kill one another over here. And you say they wrong for even letting them go out there and That's street right. Blacks ain't supposed to fight blacks. Oh, you man. don't see Jews fighting Jews. Oh, man. You don't see Palestinians fighting Palestinians. You don't see Samolas fighting Samolas. Samolas fight Kenyatta. Kenyatta's try not to fight, period. They just try to live in peace. Now here, black seals fighting black for what? What reason? It ain't even a reason for blacks to hate black from state to state. You ain't got nothing. You looking at his shoes, you looking at his car. He worked hard for that. Go get your job and get yours. You can't take nothing from nobody, neither can you get mad at nobody. It's your fault because you ain't got nothing. You can't think. And if you can't hustle, just go get you a job and just live until the day you die. And fuck the materialistic things. The more materialistic things you want, 
that puts stress on you. You got to do different things to get them. Oh, huh, man. When I first oh, came man. to the classy lady, when you gave me the keys to the building, first day we opened up, there was a nigga sleep on top of the pool table. There was a nigga sleep on top of the bar stretched out like a bed. We went in there into the kitchen to cook. It was a whole sleep on top of the motherfucking cabinet <laughs> next to the stove. It was a motherfucker in the trail sleep straight up, leaned over sleep. It was a motherfucker over in the flow sleep. Uh, what was the requirements for people to be able to just have refuge or be able to come lay around there, uh, use the electricity, uh, eat for free, uh, work your cash register, and you know they go steal out that cash register. You know they go steal that beer money. I steal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you didn't have no problem with that. These, man, you still. When I had a problem with it, this is what I do. Say, don't leave my money in that register. Do not leave that my money in that register. Say, ain't no point me telling them not to get it because they going to get it. <laughs> so whoever the last one have my money, do not put my money in that register. Do not leave my money no way in there. And me, being the mark that I am, <laughs> I come up under love. I don't know nothing but love. Yeah, I don't know nothing about hate. I met hate in the streets and learned how to avoid it then. Just cause he hate for just cause <coughs> she hate for don't make me be hateful. When I learn out y'all hatred, then this is what I tell you. When you come around me, play like you ain't hatred. Other than that, don't come around me. Don't bring your evil ways around me. I do not want your evil ways in my building. You will get bought out of my building. And you can't come back in my building until you show some respect. That's all that is. You're zero tolerant already. You're ignorant. Hmm. You're already ignorant. Look at your fingernails and tell you're ignorant. Look at your teeth and tell you're ignorant. So, so now I got to try to uplift you because I don't want to hurt you, neither do I want you to hurt me. So, Pops, dealing with this new generation right now we're dealing with and how you been brought up and what you have because you the last, you the last one left. You not, can't, not, 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 not just her, but you the last one left on the earth. No, I ain't. Lying to me. You think I'm the, it's a I'm the last one that me, Southern Trees, nigga, N-I-G-G-R, hung peoples for no reason. I come up with love and come up with something, and I seen the old niggas, the struggle that the old niggas and the old women's had back there in them days. So me coming from that and seeing them and watching them, those are my ancestors. They was the first ones over here that can't read and can't write and had to do what they had to do. The generation, you can't compare nothing mm. the day that was with from 45 on back or from 45 to now because y'all got it too good. Y'all got it too good. Them people didn't have it good back that end. They couldn't even talk back to white folks. Better not. Little boy kick you in your ass. Better not. Don't even look at white folks. When I was a little boy, I was a bad little boy. My, my people's worked downtown. So I happened to be downtown a lot. And the water fountain said white and the water fountain said black. Well, me being the little boy I am, I drank out of the water fountain, white water fountain, and I drank out of the black water fountain. The white water fountain, the water's cold. The black water fountain, the water's hot. The white bathroom is clean. The black bathroom is dirty. You can't imagine, just like you used to say all the time, and I'd be mad at you. Man, I hate old niggas. Man, I hate old ass niggas. You don't hate no old ass niggas what them old ass niggas had to go through, and they just, they don't know no better. They couldn't read, they couldn't write, they couldn't do nothing. They were slaves. You're still slaves today, but it's just a modern day slavery. Hmm. But them old people back that end didn't have a chance. And from what, from your question, the young niggas and the young hip hops, they don't have no kind of law, no kind of principles, no kind of nothing from state to state. Hmm. And all of them hate one another and the rap music don't make it no better. That, that was my next question. You got so fed up. It was a shooting one weekend. Nigga come in, whoop his bitch the next weekend. 
You called down there and told them people take all rap off this digital jukebox that was probably producing probably a third of your club's revenue. You say, take that goddamn rap off there. <laughs> Man, I sat behind that bar and I watched them niggas coming there without that motherfucking rap music. And boy, the crowd got slim, but they ain't had nowhere else to go. Boy, they big pop put that rap back on there. Well, little old nigga told me she popped the kind of music you got on, we gonna get women's pregnant. <laughs> 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 oh, will you please put that? This is what I learned about the rap music. Some kind of way, the rap music, when they get full of that alcohol, it hypes them up. They had a rap song, I don't forget the name of that rap song. Side side, side side. Them niggas in hoes, B-boy, if you ain't gonna do boom, boom, if you ain't gonna do this, don't do that, don't go different sides. Boy, and then before it's over with, there they go. There they go, they fighting and squabbling. Rap music in club, you're gonna have a fight, you're gonna have a squabble cause somebody gonna get in their ego and heal the nigga so ignorant he up just throwing his sign, he done got full of drunk. No, he ain't got no business throwing them signs up. No, these niggas gonna tear his ass up, but he don't give a damn. That rap music and that alcohol got him way high. And then the next thing you know, his little ass tore up. So take the rap music off of my box, put jazz on my box. I do not want rap peoples in my building, period. <laughs> no more, period. <laughs> if I could make a million dollars right today, they should pop open up after the eyes off spot. Man, is y'all crazy? <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want nothing but craps, poker, and deuces. So, so you don't, so you saying this new hip hop crowd, you don't want nothing to do with it. Nothing. No matter how much money you can nothing. make. Nothing. I want to stay away from them and respect them, and if they come around me, they're going to respect me, but I ain't going to even let them come around me. Period. Hmm. Well, I deal with the brothers that live 48 hours every day. I, live, I deal with the brothers that live 48 hours. They're my niggas. I'm fed. I try to teach them how to stay out the federal penitentiary. Nigga, you go in penitentiary. Nigga, you keep doing this. Nigga, you keep doing that. Well, I can't run from them. Hmm. Well, you, you went to the feds, and it's some called, you spent 33 years in the feds. It's some called Unicor. Called what? Unicor. Unicor, yeah. What, what did Unicor teach niggas in the feds? Unicor, when I got to the penitentiary, all the gangster niggas that was on the streets that was gangsters that I knew was gangsters, when I got to the penitentiary, I went to asking them questions. They said, nigga, you got to go to work. You got to go to work at Unico. You got to do this. Nigga, I ain't worked on the streets since I was a baby. Nigga, I didn't come to the country to go to work, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so all the gangster brothers, that when I went to the penitentiary, they working in Unico. Government making helmets. Government making stop signs. Government making brooms. Government making bulletproof vests. The government is making a lot of things so that created jobs for people. And in the penitentiary, federal penitentiary, you can go to work and you can make you $200 a month. Hmm. That's what Unicor was. Then all of a sudden, the private companies went to hollering at the government, man, we ain't making no money no more. We was making brooms. Now y'all making the broom and using cheap labor. Because you ain't got to pay them niggas in the penitentiary no more than 37 cents or 40 cents or 60 cents an hour. Bulletproof vests and things like that. The penitentiary making that. The company that was making bulletproof vests, they lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Signs and things like that, they lost a lot of money. So Unicor, when you go to federal penitentiary, everybody went to work. That's just like the young gangbangers on this street right now. I can make them put them guns down. I can make young gangbangers put them guns down. I don't care what nobody said. Hmm. All you got to do is create a job for the little raggedy motherfucker. Hmm create a job for him, he want to go to work, he want to do something, but he can't read and he can't write. It mm. ain't his fault because he can't he read and write English and everybody holler about, man, everybody can get an education. No, everybody can't. I didn't get now. <laughs> everybody can't read and write English. Everybody can't read and write Russia. So the ones that can't read and write, then they go to crime. Because they got to eat, they got to feed them little babies they done got about them girls and things. They got to eat, so they got to sell dope, they got to rob, they got to steal. But the government, 
old blacks, I don't care what you say, you know you're old blacks. You done gave every refugee that come to America some money, but you ain't never gave the niggas nothing yet, and you ain't gave the Negroes nothing but a job, and you done took that. Mm -hmm. Other countries done come in and took that now. Hmm. And the Chinese said he ain't gonna hire you blacks. Hire y'all in a factory back there sweeping a broom, but he ain't gonna put y'all in his office. So now, government, you old blacks. Texas, you really old. Give us three acres and a John Deere and let us go to work. You got all this land y'all got down here. Black people ain't got a chance. How can I be equal to you and you got everything? You took everything from the Indian? Now you got everything. Now how I'm gonna be equal to you? How can a black man like the uh, the Constitution? The Constitution says a black man is one fifth of a man. Who is you, sucker, to say I'm one fifth of a man? Huh? Cause you used to own my people and did this to my people and no, I ain't got nothing. So you saying I'm one fifth of a man? You got me bent. You you say black folks should try to get to the United Nations. That was your job until you went to Huron. And <laughs> <laughs> that was your job. I ain't now nothing. I ain't now nothing sharp enough, bold enough. You one of the youngster bowls that come and talk to white folks. You who rolled white folks before you who rolled black folks. You talk bad to white folks. You talk bad to rich peck of woods first. <laughs> then all of a sudden you went to picking on the poor black people. You little gang banging bang, bang but it's good. <laughs> Because we need to clean our neighborhood up. Gang banging wasn't hip in our neighborhood. The little boy's going to be a gang banger. Now they done found something else they can be, an advocator. They didn't know what no advocator was. Now they done seen Mr. White. Mr. Charleston White ain't no dope seller. Mr. Charleston White ain't no gang banger. Mr. Charleston White ain't no snitch. Mr. Charleston White's an advocator, and advocators tell every goddamn thing. If you don't want an advocator to know nothing, he has, leave him alone. Oh, man, lay it down. <laughs> leave him man. alone. Lay it down, Pop. Hey, leave him alone. God damn. You say your father told you, you come. You was born in 1945. I mean, your daddy had to be born in the 20s, or maybe the teens. Your father, this long before this rap shit come, say that two black people don't have no business fooling with each other. What's the concept behind that? Two blacks, y'all ain't got nothing. What do y'all have? What do y'all have? Y'all don't manufacture nothing, y'all don't produce nothing, y'all don't grow nothing. So what two black people is gonna talk about every day, nothing but basketball and football, and have wind up fighting and squabbling about that? So you gotta go cross the railroad track. You gotta go where the money is. Y'all went to school with white folks and y'all don't fool with white folks. Y'all went and got an education and y'all don't fool with them. And the old black man, he don't fool with them. So two black men's fooling with one another, it ain't no, it, it, what can happen? Mm. If you see well, a long time ago, white boys said, man, them two niggas riding together. Yeah, they finna burglarize something, they finna steal something. <laughs> <laughs> they done already done it. They done already you done it. You don't, you don't ride two, two, two blacks. You don't ride three blacks. You don't ride four blacks. Now, since born and created boy, every time you see somebody's four in a car. Yeah. Five niggas together, and wherever they go, they gonna act a goddamn fool and squabble. Two blacks ain't got no business fooling with one another. It's hard. Them three youngsters that you just introduced me to, they got minds and they work together. So it's proved that they can. J. Edgar Hoover said you cannot take the black man and organize the black man. You can't organize him. And look how long, look at us now. Look at us, right now in 2023, look at us. Dope selling in the neighborhood. What was the old niggas' concept about crime or hustling in the neighborhood on the porch with the women and children? I can't really say nothing about no dope dealer because I'm one of the dope selling this motherfuckers you ever seen before in life. But we sold dope on the strips. Out of pool halls, out of shoe shine parlors, out of cab stands. You don't sell dope in the neighborhood where the women's and the children's is. The neighborhood mm. is where you go lay down and go to sleep. You don't do anything in the community but go to sleep. You don't commit no kind of crime. But the boys from California, they went from state to state introducing the hood. Ain't no such thing as no hood, it's a community. Now you done turn it into a hood. Everybody got to sell dope. Every country come over here have sell dope. But they bought land with their money. 
They bought things with their money to make money. We are the only ethnic group of people that have sold dope for the last 60 years that ain't bought nothing with it but pussy, cars, and gold. And look Ooh, at us now. Boy. We ain't got nothing. Pussy, God, dog. Man, that's And jewelry. That's, that's all we didn't bought. We didn't buy nothing. That's deep. I'm guilty of it. That's deep. You I'm guilty of it. You say you know a woman who gave her son some money, and you went on social media and you tried to teach the women what to do to the boys. The, the ladies like my mama who had the money and who was spoiling the boys but didn't tell us what to do with the money. What do you tell the sisters that got the single, the, the, the women with the boys, they got the money, what do you tell them? This is what I tell them. This sucker that you done raised, give him a year and let him run the business and see if he can do it. If he can't, then that is. Same thing about my boys. My mama and my daddy didn't have nothing. Daddy told me, he said, nigga, I'm going to make your ass smell like burn rubber. I said, daddy, I ain't taking no whooping no more. He said, nigga, I'm going to take this whooping or you're going to take this killing. Or I'm going to make your ass smell like burn rubber. Or you start bringing me some money and help me paying these bills. I've been stealing ever since I was 13 years old, trying to get some money to bring an ass and help daddy pay them bills. Well, I can raise them ass whoopings up off of me. <laughs> so I start helping daddy. And I start helping mama. And I start helping my dear. Little boys now, today, they kind of effed up. I got some. But I taught all mines how to work. I don't care if mines go to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they're going to work with me. They're going to work with me and see what I do. And they see what I do, I tell them, y'all going to jail, nigga. Now, if you go over here and do what your mama do, tell you to do, go get your job, you're going to have a nice little life like your mama. But if you follow me, you're going to jail and try to keep you some bail bonds money. Don't call me, ask me about my money. <laughs> so you say when a nigga go to jail, who he supposed to call? His lawyer and his bail bond. He ain't supposed to call his mom and dad? For what? Did he leave any money there for them to come get him? <laughs> <laughs> Did he leave any money there for him to come get him? If he left some money there, then it's all right. But if you didn't leave no money there, don't call mom and daddy. Do not call mom and daddy. <laughs> nigga, lay down. If you ain't if you ain't have no money, if you ain't got no lawyer and you ain't got no bail bomb, no I've been had a bail bomb been a lawyer ever since I was 19 years old. Ever since I was 19 years old, my daddy come and got me out of jail. When he come and got me out of jail, he said, damn fool, don't go to jail. We whooped the security guard. He said, damn fool, don't go to jail for fighting. Nigga, go to jail for getting some money and don't call me no more and get my rent money. <laughs> 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 and get you a lawyer and a bail bonds, but you going to jail. You an ignorant motherfucker, so you going to jail. So I went to jail, but I kept a lawyer and a bail bonds. What mama told you when it was time to go to the feds? Send me three books, two books. Send me Martin Luther King's book and send me the Bible and told me to lay down and do the time and shut up. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that, point blank. Because what they was fitting to do, if mama had a sold a house, took up money, and got me out of jail, all they gonna do is pick me back up. The lawyer done already told my mama what, the, what they gonna do to me, how much time I'm gonna get and everything. I went to jail for being a character. I went to jail for being Texas nigga. They can't catch me selling no dope. I got 99 niggas in front of me to sell some dope. Hmm. I went to jail for being a character. I went to jail for being Texas nigga, a nigga that fight white folks every day and don't want nothing from white folks, don't even want their money. You mind your business over there, I mind my business over there. Now, I don't know nothing about God, but they say God gave the land to man. I'm a man. You can't tell me shit. The king can't tell me shit. What the king had to do to get his money? What did the king have to do? So I don't want to hear that shit. Why you join the army? Did you know you were going to war? Hell no. <laughs> Mama made me mad. <laughs> I, I go to college. So when I leave college and come home, all summer, I ain't doing nothing. Stealing, burglarizing. So I walk in the house one day and ask Mama, she, one Sunday, I said, Mama, give me 20 dollars. She said, sorry, motherfucker, you ain't going back to school and you ain't got no job. Get out of my face. I walked out the house crying like a hoe. 
<laughs> finna go burglarize something, steal something, or rob something. <laughs> Just so happen I beat them niggas out the money. So when I beat them out the money and I wake up the next morning, I should say, let me go by mama and brush my teeth. I said, nigga, mama mad at you. I said, nigga, fuck mama. I wouldn't join the army. When I wouldn't join the army since then, I've been all right. I've been all right ever since then. But if mama gave me that $20, I wouldn't even be here. I'd be dead. Hmm. I wouldn't even be here. Because I was ignorant and stupid and think I can just take these people's shit. I'm going to get busted in the ass. Daddy told me, she said, nigga, you're going to get killed. You spent a year in Vietnam. How you make it back? That, I can't answer. Mm. I looked up in the sky one night, and I live kind of fucked up over there every day, every day and every night you got to do this, and every day and every night you got to do that. I looked up in the sky and said, booties, get me back home. Well, I got me a little old seven-day R&R so I can go to Hong Kong. So I went over there seven days, had fun, tricking, having fun, eating them big old shrimps and things like that, so then I go back to Vietnam. And when I go back to Vietnam, I make it home. And when I make it home, here there's white police trying to kill me every day. So by me being a soldier, I just, you know, I'm a warrior. You, you, you read my record. Mm. Read my federal record. It's, 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 I aggravated assault on police officers, and I didn't win. I got my ass skinned up and beat up. <laughs> and bless. Mama said two things. Mama said, a dog that chase cars and a nigga that fight white folks don't live long. I'm 77. No, we ain't talk. You got how many boys? I don't know. He got a boy. He got. I don't know. <laughs> he got. A, he I was got a hoe. I was a nice and hoe, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't no square, nigga. I didn't just get my winnie to no one broad, nigga. Well, I'm your, a hoe. Yo, your youngest. Yo, <laughs> yo, I'm a hoe, nigga. Yo, youngest is my son, age. Eh? I got a 19 year old. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I'm a nice and hoe, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not to do what I did. <laughs> y'all don't say no, how many babies David had, Moses and all them and all that. Nigga, please. Nigga, I'm royalty. My blood is royalty. I we all get my syrup. She got something. She should have paid for it. I ain't never seen you get upset. Upset about what? Nothing. I'm upset now. I'm upset now because I ain't got no building where I can gamble in. I'm upset like a mug. Now I got to go to the graveyard. I'm on my way to the graveyard. It's over with. This journey is over with. I tell you all the time, it's your time. My time up. It's over with. Barely can walk, barely can do this, barely can do that. But my energy, my ten toes, I keep wanting to stand on my ten toes. It's over with. My show is over with. My dream is over with. My dream was to wake up and have me some fun every day, and I did that. That's my dream. Hmm. I didn't want no woman. I didn't want no kids. I just wanted some coochie. I like me, my nigga. I'm fascinated about me. I'm not fascinated about going to see nobody or hear nobody or nothing. My fascination come from me. I can make me happy better than anything on planet Earth, especially when I got some money. Broke, I'm a little sad. Broke, I'm a little sad. <laughs> Trying to think of something to do to get me some money to make me back happy. Yeah, for real, because my pleasure is me. My mama I've always told me, she said, man, you're a selfish motherfucker. I said, what do you mean, mama? She said, you don't care nothing about nobody but you. I said, mama, what did you tell me? Didn't you tell me you loved you more than you loved me? Didn't you tell me that? So I learned the desire to love me and please me and enjoy me. You said your mama told you she loved her more than she loved you. That's right. Huh. Makes sense to me. Yeah, makes sense to me. My son, the devil, the nigga that's crazy on a motherfucker <laughs> that I love. When I go to telling him about, man, do it like this, he said, nigga, you done it like Will did it. I'm going to do it like Will do it, nigga. I'm going to be me. I love me. What did you tell me? Didn't you tell me you love me? Well, I love me, nigga, and I'm going to do what I want to do. And he crazy. Mm -hmm. And I ain't got a worry in the world. Sorrier than you, because you <laughs> wouldn't have some babies. Say, <laughs> hey, Pop, the world, the whole world done already heard of you. The whole world done heard you when you spoke at the classy lady. When he went viral. On that when video. you went viral by telling, by speaking about these niggas that's holding on to another man, nigga, niggas, nigga. And I quit y'all quit using that word. 
This is the nigga. 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 Okay. Nigga. Nigga. A real nigga don't hold no nigga's dick. He get up and two niggas might work together, but he don't hold no nigga's dick. But you went viral the whole world. I had, I seen all Meek of Mills them, everybody, all them, everybody, all the celebrities. They sat down and they 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 kept sharing that. Trappadale put they in a song. They kept sharing it. Meek Mills personally reached out to him to try to book him. So the world get an opportunity to see. Who we who Charleston I always talk about pops. I'm mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad about that. I'm not to be seen. I'm not yeah. to be heard. I don't even know how I got on Facebook. I don't even know why I'm in here now. Cause I'm broke and didn't have no money. And this nigga swung me and said, "Come on, man, I'll put something in your pocket." <laughs> 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 he knew I was hungry. He knew I was hungry and needed something. Yeah, so he knocked on the door and said, "Nigga, pop, I need man. a favor today, nigga. Pop, Come on, do man. me a favor." We nigga. need a show today. Yeah, Come on, I nigga, and I'm gonna pay you. I can't explain this like you can't explain you. Each and every one of us, we live for ourselves. Each and every one, I can't tell y'all what to do. Y'all can't tell me what to do. It's 2023. If you ain't got a mind, then you got to get with somebody, and then y'all do what you do. If you ain't got a mind, you got to get with somebody else. Yeah, there's got a mind. What did the, what did the black Negro do? He got with the white boy when he kept that white boy's job, didn't he? Didn't that Negro keep that white boy's job? Mm. Cause the white to where he here. able to have him a Cadillac if he want one, he able to put a ring on his finger. He got good credit. He couldn't steal. The Negro couldn't steal. The Negro couldn't rob. The Negro couldn't take from the white boy. He needed the white boy because he had to eat. He got to take care of his wife and his kids. So he ain't wrong. Yeah. Mm. He can eat the way he eat. Yeah. The old nigga's the one that had to, when, he, when he's still a chicken, he got to hold the mouth because if the chicken crow, he's going to get caught. He had to steal clothes off the line because he didn't have nothing. And black people really didn't start getting something until the 60s, a color television. They ain't got nothing in. They put a little old screen on it. It was a color screen first. They had the radio. Ain't got nothing now. And the coolest thing, they don't know who they are. Hmm. You walking around every day with a cracker's name telling this boy is wrong, like the Negro telling the little boys with their pants. Boy, pull your pants up, man. Leave that kid alone, man. You're going to get shot in the mouth. That's the way he was. <laughs> <laughs> he bought them pants, man. Leave him alone. <laughs> he ain't bothering you. And they do this from state to state. You want to wear your pants way up there like that white boy. <laughs> so you wore your pants like that white boy do. So from state to state, the kids is wearing their pants a certain way. One while they wore wide leg hole in their pants. Now they got their little skinny jeans on where you can see the little booties and see the little dicks and their little designer drawers. Yeah. That's what they want. That's their game. You done played out, old Negro. It's over with. They ain't listening to you. Your own grandkids, your own nieces and nephews, and you talking about you hate them. Hate them for what? Because they didn't follow Negroism? They created a game of their own. It ain't shit. They ain't got no land. They ain't got no places of business. They ain't got no jobs. But they, they're human, and they're part of our culture. 16-year-old Bigum. I met Bigum through you. Uh, tell the people uh, about Bigum. Because Bigum came with a group of kids after projects. I think at that time, it was about 12, 12 of them all ran together. Uh... Bigum committed a robbery, so they say. Rob a white boy for his bite. Bigum was a big kid, but he was a protector. Bigum got killed uh, at a party. He stole his stepdaddy gun. Mama searched him from the house, had the gun stashed in his nuts. By the time he got to the party with the mama, stepdaddy and called and said, man, that nigga got my gun. By the time mama go back, Bigum dead. Uh, man, we had to bury Bigum. Uh, Bigum mama had insurance. Uh, but that was like one of our babies in, in the community. So that was my first time experiencing uh, working with a kid and, and losing a kid. Uh, what was all them kids to you, Pops? Uh, they never would come down to the classy lady when I first got there. You had them trained and conditioned, and he was little bitty boys, man, from four to... <clears throat> Big one was probably 14, 15 at the time, so he was like four to 15. They never ask for money. They always say, Mr. Charleston, Pops, do y'all have some work? 
uh, and we always provide them work. Uh, how, how did you establish that that relationship with the community from having a, 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 a gambling shack slash club in the, in, in the hood and them kids coming across that state highway? How they end up over there? Throwing rocks at me. <laughs> and I'm throwing rocks back at them. <laughs> <laughs> we throwing rocks at one another. And then one day I say, y'all come here, I got some work for y'all. So they run over there. And when they run over there, I went to work them. So every day they come and pop, you got any work? And Bigham was my heart because Bigham was the big one. Bigham, when I met him, I had already met him two or three years before you met him. And I would always tell Bigham, Bigham, you over for all these little old niggas. You tell these little old niggas what to do and everything. When they see crack, they throw plenty of rocks at crack. <laughs> yeah. But then I started getting them jobs. I started teaching them how to sweep. I started teaching them how to take the trash out. And they make them some money. All they wanted was some money. When they come out to their mama's house in the morning, they ain't got nothing to eat, they ain't got nothing. They just wanted them some kind of money. So I created jobs for them and told them what to do and tell them to go to school and try to help them. Then when you come down there, you made it even better because you had the rich white folks, so the rich white folks was giving you money. You took them places into where they can see things because they had never went nowhere. They just right there in stop six. Right there, never going nowhere, stealing bicycles. You come, brought them down there, and them white folks and police give them brand new bicycles. So, but that's really why I told you I can stop the gang banging. All you do is take them niggas that's gang banging, holding another nigga dick, and get that nigga a job. Hmm. <laughs> he tired of holding, he tired of doing this, and he tired of doing that. He'll work. But I ain't got no money, so you said, man, go over there and break in that house over there because that nigga got some Gucci belts and that nigga got some tennis shoes. So you're going to go break in that house. You're going to take you and your three boys to that house and break in that house. Hmm. What did the police tell Shout Dog? You the watch out. Yeah. While the big boys is in the house, you the, you the watch out. And he wasn't but six years old. Hmm. This kid wasn't but six. And when he gets something, he take it home to his mama and his sister. Hmm. And they wasn't but babies. All they want is, all they, they'll work. And they won't be gangsters and they won't pick up guns. But it, now they call the wolf game and the ape game. The ape game. And all of them, the oldest one might be, the oldest one might be 14 or 15 now. Uh, they the most notorious gang in our city yes. right now. They probably yes. got more murders. Yes. Uh, they Crips and Blood children mixed together. Yep. They Crip and Blood babies mixed together. Yeah. They daddies and mamas is OGs of this Crip gang. And, this, and they the babies who done went to school together that the McCain friends, uh, and they murderers. Uh, mm. you, got, you got the ape gang and you got murder gang. They got my attention when they let Goyeo go into the school with the guns, with the gun videos. Then I heard a song that said, knock on the door, wait shoot through the peephole. And it was a real crime that them babies had committed where they went and knocked on one of their other friends' mama ain't in them doors. And when she said, who is it? They said, police, and then shot through the peephole and killed her. He was a baby. I said, oh man. Uh, and I've been attacking this shit. Uh, with, 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 yeah, I've been attacking this shit. Yeah, I've been attacking this shit. Uh, so, yeah, that's why we got the old man here. So, man, we going to end with that, man. And uh, we'll see y'all next week, man. It was another great show and another great episode. What's up, dude? Man, listen, man, before we end, though, I want to say this. Man, this is probably one of our uh, most touching interviews we done had in 2023. But most of all, I hope everybody got some knowledge from it because this wasn't just an interview. Man, there was something that was worthwhile. So with that being said, man, uh, man, we gonna end it like that, man. The game related podcast, y'all go check it out. All right, we out.